Hello and welcome back to another vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and if you click the little bell, you get a notification when I post. If you're interested in that, if not, no worries. Thanks for stopping by anyway. I just wanted to do a little update about how placements go in because I am over halfway now. I only have five weeks left, five weeks left. And then that's it guys, I'm finished. I'm gonna be a qualified nurse. I'm gonna be done, dusted, set loose into the real world, all alone, to fend for myself. Okay, that was a little bit dramatic. It's not gonna be that bad. <laughs> you do have what they call the perception period, which I will vlog all about during that period. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but basically I will still be under supervision. I will still have like a mentor type person that's gonna support me hopefully and ease me into my new role and just make that newly qualified nurse transition process a little bit smoother. But I am excited, I can't wait. I am so excited to get into it and get started. There is that little bit of fear now starting to kick in, thinking, oh God, am I good enough? Because these nurses around me are amazing and I'm just like, ooh. But um, yeah, there is that. And But mainly I am excited and I can't wait to get stuck in. And everyone's been telling me the real learning starts when you start, when you're qualified. So I'm looking forward to the learning and future learning and continue learning. I just, I can't wait. I'm really sorry about the lighting as well, guys. The sun keeps going in and out of clouds, so the lighting might just adjust in the video. Really annoying for you, I'm sure. I'm really sorry about that, but there's not much I can do. I'm trying to block it out with my curtains right now, but hey ho, at least you can hear what I'm saying and hopefully it's gonna be interesting and hopefully some use to you. So this week my mentor has been away. She is on annual leave because she's got a big birthday and she's probably having a great time relaxing and well deserved, can I just say. But this week she has arranged an amazing week for me to go with different people. So I have been with the um, clinical case manager, CCM, who is amazing. I think there are band seven. I'm sure they're a band seven, but they manage long-term conditions into the community. So that's been amazing. I have been with one of the other ones. So I'm with the other one now to see how everybody works differently and what they do and things. And my day with him was really, really good. We saw quite a few patients. And he also, when he was doing the lung examination on some COPD patients, he let me have a listen, which was really good. So he's teaching me where to put the stethoscope. And then he said, okay, on the next patient, you give it a go. Obviously he's gonna check after I've done it. I'm not allowed to diagnose or anything like that or ever be let loose on a patient's lungs. So um, until you've been fully trained and you're fully competent to do so. I was there listening and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I've never done this before. I didn't know how to do a chest examination. I didn't know where to put stethoscopes. He was saying all these terms and stuff. And I was like, no idea what you're saying to me, but he was really good. He explained everything. And luckily the lungs I listened to were clear. There were a good set of lungs. You can literally hear the breathing in and out. It was really bizarre, but it was really, really interesting. It was like a good bazaar, not a bad bazaar. It was really interesting, really good for my own learning. And I sort of know now what you're listening for when you're listening to the chest. So that was really good experience and very good for my own learning and knowledge. So we did see, mainly it was COPD patients, a lot of them had different conditions, so they would have COPD, but they would also have heart failure. They'd also have lymphedema. They'd have quite a few things going on. So it was all about managing the, these different conditions together and making sure the patient's on the right treatments, making sure they're okay, seeing if there's anything else you can do for them making sure they're coping mentally as well because it's massive psychological impact having different comorbidities as well. So um, it's just managing all of those things and making sure that the patient is happy, safe, managing well, and hopefully managing their conditions well as well at home. And then I was with another nurse who, she's amazing. She's been qualified a year. She's out in the community and her knowledge is just fantastic. There's a few newly qualified nurses there. They're just amazing. Their knowledge is so good. And I'm just like, wow, you're newly qualified and your knowledge is just fantastic. You know exactly what you're doing. You know how to deal with your patients and the same things that I would never have even thought of. And I'm just like, wow, how do you even know this? I did say that to the one nurse that I was with and she said, they put you on all these different training packages. Like the continence training and all of that so you'll know all of these things and you'll gain a lot more knowledge from it so this is where your learning comes in I suppose as they keep telling me is from the different training 
sessions that you go on after you're qualified and you learn a lot more and then if you're physically dealing with it as well as learning about it it just is a massive help I think and it was just fantastic to see and she was so good and we had um we had to go out to a couple of patients who had the lymphedema nurse as well so the lymphedema nurse come in and they assess the lymphedema they measure the legs up for different types of wraps that you can have to manage the lymphedema it's like a compression wrap that they have around their legs to sort of disperse the fluid back up into the body so it was really interesting to see her side and what she does as a lymphedema nurse and she was just amazing. Her knowledge was really good. We learned a lot from her as well about the measurements, about the stockings and stuff that you can order, the 101 types of stockings that you can order. It was just amazing. We just thought you could just order beige, black, but apparently you can have all these different colors. You can have tie dye, you can have writing put on them. Um, you can have so many different things that I just didn't know. You can have zips on them. You can have Velcro. There's just so many things that we just didn't know. So that was really, really interesting because it's good to know that for our patients in the future so that we can advise our patients then on different things that they can have, not just the standard colors and things. So that was really, really interesting to see. And today, I have been with the Advanced Nurse Practitioner, which I think is now called Advanced Clinical Practitioner because they rolled it out so that more than one profession can do it. So like paramedics can do it, occupational therapy can do it. All these different professionals can become an ACP now, which is amazing to hear. So I was grilling her on that. I was asking how I can be one, what, can, what do I have to do? Is it hard? I was asking about a role and it was just amazing. and. I know I said before, it's something I really wanted to look into, but actually working with her today has just made me realise, do you know what, this role is amazing. And the amount of knowledge that she had and the amount of stuff that she could do was just fantastic. She was literally a doctor. Unfortunately, she doesn't get paid as a doctor, but she's literally a doctor. She was diagnosing patients. She was doing the prescriptions. She can refer them directly. So you don't have to go through the doctor. You can just refer directly yourself. She was amazing and her knowledge was fantastic. So I was sat there and we had one patient come in, a young girl. Oh God, I don't know how old she was. I think she was about 10. I might be completely wrong. She could have been a bit older or a bit younger, but roughly about 10. And um, she was like, oh, I've been throwing up. Oh, I've had this headache. I've been really nauseous. And I thought, oh, it's probably just a stomach bug. Like in my head, I, I was sort of trying to think of things that it could be. I was like, oh, it sounds like a bit of a stomach bug or something. Um, and then the advanced nurse practitioner, before even examining the patient, was like, is she prone to having tonsillitis? And I was like, tonsillitis? <laughs> and then she opened her mouth. She had tonsillitis? And I was there like, how did you even know that? From those symptoms that she gave, how did you know that? That was amazing. And it just, it blew my mind. I was there like, wow, I'm going to be a terrible, <laughs> terrible nurse I don't even know how to diagnose tonsillitis but to be fair um, she's an advanced nurse practitioner for a reason she's been through that extra training she has been through all of that the extra anatomy and physiology that you have to have um, the extra medication training to, training to be able to prescribe the extra pathophysiology all of that she's had a lot more of an intense course so I can understand why she's so amazing and she's got life experience as well. She's got stood, done so many things in her life. It's just fantastic to see. So yeah, I'm gonna not beat myself up about it, but it was just amazing to see. And I just thought, wow, yes, this is for me. I could see myself doing this. I wanna be that person that's just like, yeah, it's this, 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 dun, off you go. Um, she was just, yeah, whether I'm good enough for that, I don't know, but I'll get there. And that's where I'm gonna aim to be. It's amazing. So yeah, she's just confirmed everything that I thought I knew anyway, but now I've seen it in practice and I'm like, yes, bring it on. I want to be this person, this knowledgeable person that's helping patients and being amazing. I want to be that person. Um, so yeah, so I've had an absolutely lovely day with her. It's been absolutely fantastic. Tomorrow is Friday. I'm not going to vlog tomorrow, but I'm just, I'm back with the um, community nurses tomorrow. So I'll just be doing my normal everyday community nurse things. Next week, my mentor is back and I think we're doing a halfway interview. Fingers crossed I'm doing all right. Oh, hopefully I haven't got too much things that I need to improve on, but we'll see next week. I've only got five weeks left, like I said. Oh my God. And then next week I'll only have four weeks left. We're like single-handed figures, guys. I'm so excited. I can't wait. So yeah, 
and that's it that's all i've really got to say for this week but i just wanted to give you a little update that my community placement is going amazing i'm absolutely loving every single minute of it it's fantastic if any of you are in two minds whether the wards are for you or not go to community try it out and see how amazing these community nurses are gp as well gp nurses community nurses all primary care nurses are fantastic so please don't listen to the negativity around it don't think you're, you're going to be a wasted nurse, you're going to lose skills. All of this rubbish, nonsense people that are feeding us student nurses and other nurses, qualified nurses as well, they're saying it to each other. So please do not listen to that negativity. Please go out there, see for yourself how amazing, hardworking and fantastic these guys are the most knowledgeable I've ever seen. And I've been on quite a few wards and community rotations. So um they are some of the best nurses i've ever seen the knowledge the skills are fantastic so go out there give it a go try it you might just fall in love